friends uh, this is a laparoscopic cholecystectomy video simple gallbladder but little difficult exposure on the calyx so this is the camera port in the supra umbilical region a patient is little obese patient with a pendulous abdomen and i am making a 5 mm trocar at the inferior edge of the liver and this will give a good control of uh, dissection uh, since it is a 5 mm trocar when i going for a clipping that time i'll convert this epigastric port, port into 10 mm so this is the subcostal port on the fundus of gallbladder and this is the right lateral port i am making it below the level of liver above the level of colon and during this time the patient position will be head and up and then right up so all the port is facing towards the gallbladder so that the port side pain will not be there in the post operative period so why i am making a 5 mm in epigastrium uh, i am going to convert into 10 mm when i going for a clipping and instrument is coming uh, 5 mm instrument is coming through the 10 mm the stability will be little less so that's why i want to do a, a calyx dissection is a very important one i want a very st a stable uh, instrument so that's why i put 5 mm this patient you can appreciate the left lobe liver is coming and uh, false form is also little bit attached on the uh, quadrate lobe the first step will be hold the infundibulum and then make a peritoneal incision anteriorly and then posteriorly like a u shape manner i don't dissect any any structure only i made a peritoneal incision so i'm dividing the false form uh, attachment on the quadrate lobe little bit or you can divide the entire uh, false form also and left lobe is also coming in the view so that we can give traction on little uh, more traction compared with normal uh, or you can elevate the uh, right right side up table up like right side table little bit make, make it more and you can appreciate here i am changing the uh, traction method of holding the infundibulum to expose the posterior peritoneum posterior calyx peritoneum and uh, rear surface is seen well and the right side duct also is going sectoral duct is also going and my aim is to make only the peritoneal incision what what happen if we do the peritoneal incision uh, the in, infundibulum is coming away from the uh, right hepatic duct so that is the one of the main thing and uh, without doing a peritoneal posterior peritoneal incision if we dissect only the anterior and then your instrument may injure the right hepatic duct so it is like a u shaped manner i open the peritoneum just i am showing during surgery and this is a big node is sitting on the uh, to on the vessel cystic artery so now i started uh, dissecting the fat a little fatty calyx this patient so i'm dissecting the fat see like this if you open the instrument and then retract the exposure will be good i can extend my peritoneal incision on the infundibulum of the gallbladder so that uh, the safety triangle uh, critical view of safety can be viewed in better way by dividing this peritoneum again i am coming i am holding the infundibulum and uh, it is retracted upwards and medially so that the posterior uh, calyx is being exposed so i am dissecting uh, just to keep the instrument open a little bit and then uh, coagulate the fat or small vessel uh, some patient may have a posterior uh, branch of uh, uh, cystic artery you should not injure that so this is the way we used to hold the infundibulum the traction is the key factor because you can i am applying cautery but you cannot see any black spot if the traction is less and then the more cautery will go in that area it is it's produced black that is called carbolization it will maximum temperature will go in that particular uh, area so i again i'm holding the infundibulum uh, retracting towards uh, laterally uh, i'm dissecting the anterior calyx so that is the uh, uh, space between the artery and duct dissected and this is the uh, artery of calyx so these are all artery of calyx small small branches and uh, now you can concentrate on uh, my left hand how uh, it is moving further dissection so during this time i i have a very good exposure by retracting the uh, infundibulum like this and then now i am dissecting the uh, artery so now you can see 
I am just closing and then I pushing the infant bulong. Uh, this is a, another type of uh, traction so that the artery becomes stretched. So now again I want some more exposure. I open and then I push the artery towards infant bulong. So I am not holding the artery, just I open the instrument, I push the artery. So this will give a very good exposure. And then I am going to, uh, so now I am going on the behind the artery and then I am viewing the critical view of safety as that is uh, very much important uh, uh, to see uh, two tubular structure is entering the gallbladder. By seeing this uh, window, uh, liver seeing the uh, liver through this window and you can able to tell that only these two uh, tubular structures is going only to the gallbladder. So that is a safety view we are achieving now. Again now you can see I am just uh, uh, open the instrument I pushing it I am not holding the uh, cystic uh, duct. So, starting from uh, traction method 1, 2, 3, so I am showing in a different way how to expose the calate in case if we have a exposure difficulties. So, again I am milking it out that is a common uh, uh, bile duct. I can come little down uh, and all these uh, small attachment, posterior attachment can be separated. Minimal cartridge have to apply, it should not apply continuously, only fraction of second is should be done. These are all the small vessel and peritoneal attachment. It look like a vessel. Eh? See, it is bleeding. So you have to apply cautery, adequate traction, and then I'm checking posteriorly. It looks a broad uh, cystic duct, but because of the attachment, see another vessel is there. So all the vessel and the attachment can be divided safely because our exposure is good. And even though it is called the cystic duct CBD junction is called the danger zone and we are away from danger zone. And you can see I am milking it out always this habit is very important uh, because we are handling the infant uh, the stone should not pass down. So these are all the sulcus and the right sectoral duct. And now you can see I am uh, coming up to the level of infant CBD junction, uh, cystic duct CBD junction. And I am just seeing the tinting of CBD is there or not. It is a little bit tinting is seen now when I am giving a traction. So I am not going to apply very much down. I am going to apply the clip little bit above around 2-3 two, two, mm above the level of the junction. So now that is the level. So that is the CBD. That is a common bile duct. See I am applying a clip. You can see around 3-4 uh, mm or 5 mm gap is there between the less than 5 mm gap between the junction. Uh, of uh, cystic duct and CBD. So again that is a definitive clip, this is a supportive clip or is called additional clip. So these are all 9 mm clip, uh, we used to call medium large clip otherwise is called green clip. So 9 mm clip and then this is the sentinel clip I am applying. And uh, there was a question in the previous uh, video, uh, so that is a definitive additional or supportive and uh, sentinel clip. So, I told about the division of artery first and uh, applying of clip uh, anything you can do cystic duct or artery but only thing uh, division of artery to be first done because once you divide the cystic duct and you are giving traction accidentally with the left hand the artery will get owls. That is why after clipping the artery to be divided first and one of the training course one trainee told that so it is easy to remember A, B, C, D. So, what is ABCD means artery before cystic duct. You have to divide the artery before cystic duct. He told like that. So, it is uh, you have to keep in mind. Uh, this looks little bit thicker artery. Sometimes thinner artery, you know, it will get avulsed. So, now I apply clip. So, I have to divide the artery before uh, dividing the clip. And then these two clip is very nicely applied. Uh, maybe this, maybe I demonstrated in some of the co training course or the conference. I am explaining with the other clip. And if you have any doubt, you can put another clip also. And there is no need for three clip, even two is enough. But in this case, I, I made an extra clip. So I am going for, uh, so I have to divide the artery first. So I just uh, following the basic principle here. And you can see I am going to the artery. Since I, I made a clip above and below, I am dividing with, with the scissor without any energy source. And then I am coming to the duct. See now once you leave it, duct is facing laterally. So that is that is very important. That means it is a cystic duct. If it is facing up means some major uh, vessel duct will be injured. It look like a small uh, cystic, uh, posterior cystic artery. And uh, I think any uh, big or small, if you see posterior cystic artery, 
you have to apply clip and even i don't use energy device in this case i didn't use any uh, harmonic or ligasu and only monopolar is there but my my practice is if i see any uh, posterior uh, artery i use to clip here there is no space to go deep uh, anyway i apply and this is the cystic artery posterior branch because the pressure is so high in posterior branch and bleeding uh, from the during laparoscopic cholecystectomy it is happen from the posterior branch routine usually so that's why you have to clip and then divide so i'm i'm separating the gall bladder with the from the liver bed using a monopolar hook hook and spatula both are very good uh, very good instrument uh, we started using spatula in the beginning and then nowadays we are using hook and i'm going to retract see now the bleeding is there and here also i am some bleeding and because you know, i told you, you know the bleeding happen only from posterior branch this video it is uh, like a very much uh, you know very minimally edited other is called unedited video only the instrument change and camera clean is both this uh, will be deleted otherwise the entire surgery is there it's unedited video like so now i am started separating the uh, in peritoneal uh, attachment of the lateral wall of uh, uh, gall bladder we have to open the peritoneum right side left side uh, first left side uh, then uh, right side then posterior like that so now i am retracting now you can see i am just uh, trying to hold the lateral wall i am uh, not able to hold it properly i am just supporting the liver uh, gall bladder with the ins, uh, uh, hook and then i am holding it see supporting with the hook i am holding the post wall of gall i am trying to hold the post wall of gall bladder so by pulling this post wall the tissue is will get stitched even the minimal cartery will divide the structure and this patient doesn't have a mesentery even though a lot of fat uh, on the calyx and the gall bladder but gall bladder mesentery is uh, very thin here and it's a high chance of injury of the gall bladder might be there you have to be very careful so the traction on the lateral wall of gb uh, so that you know the tissue gets stitched i can able to dis divide that i can make a peritoneal incision on the lateral side always i used to uh, now work with the uh, shoulder of the hook now you can see i am holding the post wall i am lifting can you see this how much expose the plane uh, if i hold the post wall of uh, gall bladder see now we can able to divide nicely so this traction is the key for uh, gall bladder separation from the liver bed and uh, we don't believe any energy device and even we can do without energy also but the traction should be good otherwise you know you may enter the entering into the gall bladder or you may injure the liver bed so that's why i'm i'm uh, keep on uh, you know marking the left hand traction how to hold like that and keep on telling and then i mark in the video also and uh, so left hand is the key for any laparoscopic surgery if you see all my videos hernia fundoplication tap gall bladder the left hand play very actively uh, compared with the right hand so if any surgeon if they develop the, this uh, skill of uh, using the left hand very casually and then effectively and then uh, they will do any uh, laparoscopic uh, surgery cases so now again i'm going the post wall towards the right side each and every time i touch the gall I, i retract the gall bladder a little bit with the hook and then i'm changing my left hand position here uh, we could see post wall uh, pundus uh, post wall gall bladder had, had a fat but the mesentery is uh, very very less very thin mesentery so i'm touching the gall bladder so now i'm coming on this right side so this is like a cooking only this i i, I used to cook the peritoneum and divide otherwise uh, entire uh, gb uh, removal i'm using the uh, shoulder of the hook not the tip of the hook so any surgery laparoscopic surgery that it's called two handed technique and surgeons should use use the left hand very effectively and uh, smoothly and uh, uh, coordinated we used to call in the surgery coordinated deployment so like that 
left hand is called the active hand in uh, any laparoscopic surgery. So now I am going towards the fundus. Here, little bit uh, liver, uh, you know, the capsule is a little bit damaged. I am just uh, uh, again I am going back little above, above and then I am coming to the correct plane. See, now it is a correct plane has come. Sometimes, if we go deep, there is a vein in the liver bed will bleed, and then uh, you should not, you cannot apply clip. You have to suture. I have a video. I'll uh, upload that uh, video a little later in a difficult cholecystectomy cases. Liver bed vein bleeding suture. So now it's very little uh, superficial one. I am applying a, a bipolar coagulation. You can see it is coming from the right subcostal port. This is my left hand coming from the left hand. Uh, so that it will be parallel to the liver bed, so effective coagulation will be there. So I am placing the gall bearer in the endo bag and it is a self-made bag. So even though it is not much infection and our policy, our practice is to place it in the endo bag and then we will take it through the epigastric port. We do not take it through the, uh, the umbilical port, we take it through the epigastric port. So, uh, once a gall bear, uh, mouth is coming outside, you can make it opening, suck the bile and then uh, slowly you can uh, uh, take it out. And then betadine gas piece is <coughs> wiped in that area. And now, this is the method. So, I am lifting the gall bladder and now you can see the water is touching the entire liver bed, gall bladder bed otherwise. And then the colon is retracted, is make like a cavity. Once this cavity is filled, I am not moving my left hand. Once the cavity is filled, then I, I suck the area. So, like that, multiple uh, times you can wash effectively and uh, momentum or colon should not come in your way because my left hand is holding that. And uh, another thing, it make like a cavity in that area so that water will store there, will not go down. Water will not go to the other places. So, all the case you do wash because uh, the carbolic acid will be washed away when you are giving a wash. And with this, uh, I will finish this case. And then very little exposure difficulty this patient. Uh, I do in a different way of uh, traction on uh, calots when you are doing anterior and posterior dissection. So I think uh, this, this type of uh, calots uh, uh, holding and then uh, uh, exposure of calots will be helpful in a difficult uh, exposure cases. Thank you so much.